making masks? How about making multiples, 10 at a time, in record speed? I'll show you how, coming up. Hey, Chanel here, bringing you another edition to So Chanel. This one's a little different. It's all about mask making. I usually bring you tips, tools, and techniques for your fashion inspirations. And now I'm gonna bring you tips, tools, and techniques for your mask making inspiration. So my last video was all about making little mice and rabbit masks. Fashionable, trendy accessory. But this time we're just gonna get serious. I'm gonna show you how to make these fast. Let's get to it. Okay, you're at home making masks. I hope you're not making one at a time because <laughs> that would take a long time. The more and more you sew, the more your engineering brain gets in there and starts figuring out how to make them faster. And one way to make them faster is to do like 10 at a time, uh, kind of figure out what's the quicker way. So I have a sewing school in North Carolina and I have summer camps uh, every summer. This will be my 11th summer. I can't believe it. So that means thousands of kids I've taught how to sew. I can't believe it. Uh, but every summer I make these cute little tote bags for my campers. They, we give them sketch pads and all that kind of stuff and they bring home their projects. They bring them in every day and it's our little system too. We hang them up and put all, keep all their stuff in there. So it's been a really great system. But I make these all myself. I um, copied a tote bag a long time ago and every summer I get faster and faster at it. I figure out different ways to you know eliminate a step and um, still keep the quality and the strength and then I I get to them but I also I love to um, challenge myself to see how fast I can do them. I'm always like looking at the clock and I wonder why my students do that. They're probably picking that up from me because <laughs> it's I laugh at them sometimes they're just like racing all the time but now I'm thinking about it. I think they get it from me. So anyway, um, so I want to show you how to just do 10 at a time. Some very easy masks, very good quality ones. These are um, the masks I made. I, my last video showed you how to make animal masks like this. Um, and I put the pleats on going one way and then one way up and just a fold. And um, probably if I made some more of these, I'd figure out some faster ways to do them. But um, I'm gonna see what we can do, see how fast we can get them and give you some tips along the way. So here, we're gonna get started. Okay, to get started, we first wanna cut our fabric. I'm not gonna cut it, I'm actually gonna tear everything. So when you tear these woven fabrics right on the grain, you actually can get it perfectly straight. So first you gotta stop, start off with a, a torn edge uh, that is just perfectly straight. So if it's cut, just make sure you tear it and get your whole uh, width even right there. Because when they cut it, it's actually not necessarily um, straight. Uh, because the grains, if you know anything about grain lines on fabrics, that's a really long story. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is cut um, 10 9 by 13. So I'm going to start with got to figure out where 9 is. So I think the, the width is 9. So there's a 9 inch strip right there. I don't know how many 13's I can get in here. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to cut 13. That one right there. Another one right there. And another one right there. So there is, what I do? I got three out of one width, okay? And I'll throw this one in the scrap bin. There's three. So I got to cut how many more? I got, there's another three. So there's six. There's another three. That's nine. There's another three. That's 12. I'll do 12. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'll cut 12 and then I'll do the other 
two later. Okay, so now we're going to cut this uh, 13 inches up. Use the board. I got my board here. I don't know if you can see it. It's at the 72 mark, which is two yards, right? And then I'll cut it over to the 59. That should be 13. I use these cutting boards a lot because the measurements are right on there. So we have now six. And do another 13 inch ones. Next step is we're going to be pressing too. So there's nine. And you got to get all these threads all taken apart. Got to make sure my excess ones are not getting confused in there. But okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut 12. Ready? One. To the 59. Run that one away. Threads everywhere. You just got to break them. And a lot of my students get tangled up in the threads. But a lot of times you just have to... Don't be afraid to tear them. I have a little project out called a, Be a Thread Boss. You have to be the boss of the thread. Boss of the thread. So I'm going to put these two aside for later so I don't get confused. <laughs> I get confused easily. Now we have this piece here. Um, and then we're going to be, I'm going to go and press them. But before I do that, this fabric, you're supposed to use tightly woven cottons. And this one's could be tighter. Um, what I'm going to do is cut out some elastic, or not elastic, I'm going to cut out, I'm going to do that too, some lightweight pellon, because that'll give a nice, um, nice other barrier in here. And what I want to do is do half of that, because I'm just going to do a pellon piece in the half here, and to reduce bulk, I'm not going to get it in the seam allowances either. So I need to do um, four by sixes. So I'm going to cut four inches here. And I'm going to buy sixes, sixes there. This will be, you can go here. Turn this around. Once you learn how to use these cutting boards, you can get them all straight. When you can see through the fabric, it's so great. So here is, I'm going to do six for the half. Another six. And this was on a fold, so I'm going to cut that one. That, and then I got two extra ones here. I got to do four. And then the sixes. Okay, there is ten pieces of interfacing. What I'm going to do now is those little gooey crystal ones to the wrong side of this. That doesn't look right. <laughs> it's odd. Oh, nine. Oh, I did that wrong. Shoot. Yeah, because it's got to go that way. That's interesting. Actually, what I can do, because these all get pleated in here to reduce the bulk. See? Happy accidents are good. I'm actually going to put that right in the center because that is where... The center is right there, and all this gets doubled up. That's what I'm going to do, just put a little extra right in there. So I'm going to go and press these all down in the center. All right. Okay. i got to work fast because I have a cordless iron here, but I want to show you something real quick. So I pressed a few of these, and I came up with a really quick idea. Is I stack these all right sides down, put my little piece of interfacing there, and then if I... 
not supposed to use steam on interfacing, but I do, by the way. <laughs> and you press these all at the same time. Fold it over that way. This way, the heat's going down through the next layers. And you're going... Oh, also, some of these fabrics, when you tear them, you have to true them back up. It's called truing the fabric up. It's a long story. <laughs> what grains of fabrics will do. It might happen to a lot of these. So press the interfacing. That one's coming out good. Press the fold. Because I'm going to put a fold in this fabric here. See, these are already pressed down because of all the heat going through the layers. I have to press this one. Get that true back up. I'm losing heat from my iron. I have to put it back on its heat source. See if I can get through just a one more. One more, one more. See, these are already anchored down. Okay, got those pressed. Got ten of those pressed. I'm going to go put my iron back on its heat. Next up is cutting elastic. So the quarter inch elastic seems to work the best. If Even if you have eight is good. So we want to do seven inches right here. Actually what I'm going to do is do 14 inches. Well that might be too hard. Never mind. Seven inches. I got to cut 20 of these. I'm just going to cut 10 at a time because sometimes the more you do, uh, actually what might be the quickest way is actually just go like this. Put it on your board and then cut them all like that. But I'm not going to sit here and videotape me cutting all those. So just seven inches long, quarter inch. Now if you run out of this small elastic, do you know you can cut some of these elastics. Um, not all of these wider elastics will will do that, but this is a uh, one and a quarter inch elastic. So I can do cut this in half. You literally can cut your elastic. You might need to mark it if you're not really good with eyeballing it. And look at that. It doesn't come apart. It just depends on the elastic. You can actually just cut this right in half. I believe this piece, I had cut a 14 inch piece. So now I could get, how many can I get out of that? And I'm gonna cut a quarter. I'm gonna go cut this one in half. And then I also wanna show you, if you don't get it right on the green, these, um, like there, I missed a few. Gotta have some pretty sharp shears. Don't cut your fingers. Right here, I think I missed one on the grain. You see that right there? This, you just peel off, and then you're okay. <laughs> it depends on the elastic. If you actually just test it, but if you buy, uh, if you actually buy some elastic at the store and hopes to do that first test it, here's that other piece here. I'm just gonna peel that off, and then I'm okay. Oh, here's that's the other side of that one. Now it's just a little bit, um, smaller and the bonus is it's kind of softer on the sides. Wow, you should feel this. Much softer on the side. So then if that's a 14 inch piece there, just cut that in half and then I have that's enough for one mask. Here's enough. I need to be cheaper to buy wider elastic and trim it. There's enough for another one. So I'd have four masks out of that one piece right there. That's pretty cool. So there's the elastics. Now we'll get on to the pleats on these. Okay, now we're on to sewing these. And basically it's just a bunch of pleats, so hopefully you're good at pleats. <laughs> I am. Um, what you want to do is put pleats going up one way and down the other way past that fold. So that's why I put a fold in there. Well, you can't see it very well on this one. Um, and then just balance them out. You don't, they don't have to be perfect um, on both sides. So I, I pinned the first one and to do these fast I'm going to try and pleat all these at the machine while the machine's going. 
scary. <laughs> but um, I uh, did is my first mask ever because I design evening gowns. <laughs> I don't do masks <laughs> or quilts. I don't do a lot of square stuff. I do round stuff. <laughs> but um, my first mask, I did all the pleats going one way, and then when I turned it inside out, it was more like a gather in here. And I was like, well, that's odd. I mean, it still it still works. It's fine. But it, I guess we're just so used to having those little pleats and stuff. But um, I'm going to put my hair in a ponytail, get ready, because I hate my hair in the in my face like this when I'm going fast like that <laughs> but this um, reminds me of a story I was working on a movie once with a soap opera actress and her zipper busted um, on an evening gown that I had made and um, the zipper kind of split and I was like she was like about to go out and uh, do her thing and I'm like oh, somebody I'm like Chanel you have to fix this I'm like give me a ponytail holder and I, they're like She's going to MacGyver this with a ponytail holder. And, and I just went, oh, okay, like this. Okay. And I went, <laughs> and I fixed it. <laughs> they were laughing at me. It was funny. I didn't mean to do it. It was just literally like I had to just like get myself centered. And stuff. So I'll meet you at the machine. Okay, to get started, we, I'm going to have all of these. I'm going to put these on my lap. And I'm going to keep this whole area clean so that everything flies off there. I'm going to be putting all my pins, if I have any, over to the right. And I have all my elastics to my right. And I got my shears here because last time I made these I forgot my shears. The first one I'm going to just keep with this pins, uh, or the pins in there, and then the next one I'm going to try and do without pins. But uh, first I'm going to put on the basting stitch, which is not the longest stitch because I'm just going to be basting this down. I'm going to start with putting this elastic half inch down, and this is all estimating seam allowances. So no, it doesn't have to be accurate. And, and I have my pins in the wrong way on this one because I, um, I'll, sh I'll show you what that means. When I teach my students all this, I always have the pins out coming from here and then moved to the right just for efficiency. On there, I, perp I just did that for some reason because it was a little easier at the time. So see how that's easy already? I'm just going to base this on and make sure all my pleats aren't caught under here. And I'm just going to sew these pleats. Now each pleat is about a half an inch deep, which is a, so that means one inch, and it goes half an inch. And they're about at three quarters of an inch away from each other. If you wanted to actually map them out, but trying to make stuff fast so it doesn't have to be superior quality and nobody's buying it. Um, <laughs> you're donating it. Well, not that it matters there, but um, I forgot. I already forgot to put the other side of the elastic in because I was talking. I was talking. I was talking. So now i got to put this on the other side. The fold is right here. So I just want to baste this right here. Just do that again. I mean, if you're going to do a lot at a time too, check your bobbin has enough thread. And I'm going to go the other side and see my pins are in the wrong way and I'm so used to having my pins in so they're easy to pull out. It might be hard for me to actually sew this. Okay, now I sewed over those pins, it was just the tips. I actually tell my students not to do that. but. Sometimes when you're in a hurry, they got a lot of thicknesses, that's what you do. So now I'm going to baste over that. Actually, the pins in that way, it's kind of easy to keep them down that way. Huh, interesting. You learn something new all the time. Then you're going to put, I'm going to put the other piece of elastic here. And then that's done there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each piece here and I'm going to... See about doing pleats as I go. I just want three of them. I'm going to start, put that elastic half inch down. My first pleat, second pleat. Sometimes you lift that up, put another one in there. A little bit off there. I'm going to bring the elastic around here. So put that elastic right where that fold is right there. I usually sometimes reverse it. Now I gotta put the pleats the 
other way, right here. And another one, other way. Other way. Okay, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do all one side. I'll start with my elastic. Going about a half an inch down. Put my first pleat in. Second pleat. Third pleat. If the presser foot's in the way, just put it that way. Don't forget to grab this guy. Put him over here, right next to the fold. Um, pleats the other way now. Pleats. This one's much easier for some reason. <laughs> the pleat's going that way. Looks a little off on that one. This pleat's going to be a little off. That's going to be fine. Okay, get another piece. Another piece of elastic. Did I forget to do that one? Nope, I got it. Okay. <laughs> you forget it. You just go back. You actually just go back after you do the line, basically. Okay, I'm going to start there. One pleat up. That one's hard to get. Hard to do the pleats up because the presser foot's in the way. And there. And there. But then, see? You get better at it as you go. I'm going to put... Bring this guy around here, get him right by the fold, and then pleat down, pleat down, pleat down. Woohoo! I'm on a roll now. Okay, don't forget the elastic. Should put some music on too. Get this going here. As soon as you think you're on a roll, that's when you start making mistakes. Yep. Uh, about three quarters of a way. Another one. Don't forget the elastic. Go around. Where's my fold? It's over here. Oop. Find if the elastic's not on the fold, it doesn't roll inside out right. Okay, wait. Oops. Uh. Gotta put my pleats down. See, I'm talking and I'm forgetting stuff. Pleats down. A little off on this one. <laughs> that one's gonna look a little funny. It's okay. How many more do I got? Four more. I don't want to bore you guys with this. So I, oop, don't forget my elastic. I'm gonna try one of these soft elastics. But when I come back to the other side, I gotta make sure I do the rest of them. Uh, pleat up. Pleat up. Pleat up. Bring this around here. And there, now pleat down. I like the downs. This is so much easier. <laughs> I think I got a little spaced off there. Yeah, totally run that one. I'm going to finish these up. And I'll come back to you and show you the other side. Okay, I got all of those done. All of these are all connected right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this one. They're all still connected. And I'm going to put these all on my lap so that they're all coming off like this. And I'm just gonna go back and do this other side. I'm gonna baste it. And I'm gonna try and like get these pleats to kind of drape evenly like that. Not sure if that's gonna work, <laughs> but they will. Okay, so now my up pleats are without the elastic on this side. Actually, I could still do that because the elastic just goes in anyway. Okay, and then I'm going to see maybe that's easier the other way. So I'm going to put the elastic on close to that way. And now I got down pleats on the elastic side. 
try and balance these off like this. Making these masks will get you really good at working with the fabric, which is, I find a lot of my students really have trouble working with the fabric and knowing that they're the boss of the fabric. Boss of the thread, boss of the fabric. Everybody's afraid of either one, so but you gotta just, hey, I'm the boss. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> anyway, this way. No elastic there, or I could. Guess it doesn't matter. See? Make some pleats going up. Now I'll go down. As soon as I cross that fold, I gotta remember to put my elastic in. first fold and then I go down Whew. I'm gonna have to have my intermediate students work on these it's great practice bring this around want to try to make sure your elastic doesn't get twisted there's that see there's no you're saving a lot of time not cutting threads here taking it off cutting it Get that started. Also, when you put your needle down into your fabric, it kind of plays as a holder, holds it in place. That's how we pivot fabrics and all. You put your needle down. Just keep going. Coming up to a fold, gotta put my elastic in there. Right here, I got the needle down in there, holding it, holds it in place. finger just keep on going <laughs> my worst injury was this when the screw hit me right here my hand got too close and I had my foot on the gas and oh it hurt I think I was working on a wedding dress at the same time and or during that and I had blood on it always have some hydrogen peroxide next in your sewing room because you just squirt it on your fabric, it actually just bubbles up and takes the blood right out. Hydrogen peroxide, who knew? We use that on the movie sets too, because especially when we have kids work, when we're working with kids, they go, go out and play in our, they play in our uh, costumes. I had a few of them playing dodgeball while we were on taking breaks between shooting and then they fall and get blood on their stuff, on their costumes and oh boy. Crazy life on a movie set. Okay, go in this. This is my soft elastics. I noticed I had that one there. Okay, again I'm gonna finish these up and I'll show you how they look. Okay, got those done. I have a row of masks here. Got them all pleated. You know, you really got to concentrate on these while you're at the machine. And you know what that's good for? Keeps your mind off of this terrible virus going around. You can get your mind into some sewing. You're doing a good thing. Keeps your mind positive. Huh. Now, what we got to do is just clip all of these threads right here one at a time ah, got one off and you just clip them and then you don't have like all these long threads hanging all over the place because that's one of my biggest pet peeves is having all of these threads having threads hanging out you gotta be a thread boss I had my sewing retreat and I came up with this great little five pro tips on efficient fast sewing and I have that uh, PDF for you guys too if you want it I haven't really advertised it yet but one of them is be a thread boss
cut all your threads off as you go because then when you go to connect other pieces of things like you're putting a sleeve on there and you got all these threads hanging around it drives you crazy so and we want sewing to be less frustrating so that's one way to keep it down keep the frustration down is to cut all your threads okay so now I have this right there I could go press it but I don't have time so <laughs> what I'm gonna do is now fold it in half like so keep that elastic in there and then I'm just gonna sew it around leave an opening come back up come around back that way and I turn it inside out and then it's kind of done I got a little hole in here and the smaller the hole you can leave here um, hard, sometimes it's harder to turn inside out but Unless you have to patch up together. So, and if it's small enough, you don't even have to hand sew it or do anything, but you can also use that glue tape. I'll show that to you. All right, I'm going to take these all to the sewing machine, I'm going to sew them together. Okay, we're going to get started. I'm going to put all these on my lap. I'm going to start with one here. Nice little pleat there. I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to start on the folded side here. Make sure they're going to half. I'm going to do about a half an inch seam allowance. Put this on a little bit tighter stitch. I find just like my machine, just a three is good. Go half an inch. You can also use this little handy dandy thread guide if you don't have a magnetic machine. If you have the like the beeper machine, then you don't want to use these. Go so here. And estimate about half an inch. Pivot. You got to put your needle down. Make sure the elastic's tucked in there. You don't get it stuck. Come along here. Do a little tiny reverse. Pick up the presser foot. Go about two, three inches. Probably three. And then go the other way. Reverse it. It's a little tiny reverse right here. See that? My students tell me I do it so fast they don't see it. You just go da 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 like that. <laughs> Make sure you try to make sure your pleats don't get all stuck. I'm gonna estimate the next half inch. Pivot. Put the needle down. Really helps. Make sure this is all smooth. I think there's elastic in there. And reverse stitch it there. There's your first one. So it's right here. See, I didn't cut. I still have those two threads. And then when I go to do these, I just have to clip them like that. That way, you, again, you don't have threads driving you crazy. Okay, so now I got that one done. Take this next one. Fold it in half. Try it this way. First stitch. About half an inch there. I think I got my elastic stuck there a little bit. Oh, I can feel it. In sewing, there's a lot of just, you have to feel stuff going on. you got to pay attention. A tiny reverse there. Pick it up. Go about three inches. A little tiny reverse again. Uh, reverse. There's two. Start on one side. Pretty soon you figure out which side to start on. <laughs> Reverse. Pivot. Pick it up three inches. so far by the time we turn these all inside out maybe an hour and just tear the fabric that means it's all on grain when you instead of cutting them eliminates a big step and it also makes them 
uh, the, the straighter all this grain is here, all these pleats will work out. They tend to curl and stuff if you don't honor the fabric's grain line. A little tiny tuck there. Because all this stuff will just blend together when it's all on grain. If you don't know about grain line in fabrics, I'd Google it. Or I have a sew bit coming out soon all about grain lines. I just don't have it out yet. Grain lines with my students seem to be one of them. One thing they can't wrap their mind around. And it's basically just like, see how this is really folding just straight like this. It's because it's all, all this is on the grain. And I know it's on the grain because it's, I tore it. When you tear it right down the length grain or tear it down the cross grain, it can't go crooked. If you ever see your clothes and they're all kind of curling around, not laying straight because it's off grain. So fabrics are the medium that we use. We should know about it. We should know a little bit about fabric and how it's made concept of it and then we can use it better. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. I'll get right, right back to you. Alright? Alright, I got another row of pieces of fabric. <laughs> this time they look like something. So now what I'm going to do is cut them off individually. See, no, no hanging threads. I love that. Oh. Then I'm going to cut the corners. I happen to use one thread was white and the other side was green. My bobbin was green. So if I cut the white side, I can actually see it. The green side, I can't. But what I'm going to do is clip the corners. I'll show you the white side, although I probably cut a hole in this. I'm going to cut the corners. It's called clipping the corners and that's what takes the bulk out of stuff when you turn it inside out. So clipping the corners. Don't cut the thread. I did cut some elastic but and I did a little tiny reverses at the elastics too. Looks like I did that just automatically because that'll hold that elastic in because you don't want anybody wearing it and it popping off. So now I got a really tiny hole there that must be inch and a half or something <laughs> you know you can squeeze it through it's doable so squeeze it through you can use the elastic to pull it out one side right there do one side then do the other and you find the elastic pull it out like that oh Ta -da! there is my mask Quick and easy. Quick and easy. Now, so see you can go press this. You can pull it, get the pleats like that, give it a little press. And then also where that little hole is right there, what you can do is use this heat and bond stuff. Have you seen this in the stores? This is an old one. Somebody gave it to me. It's probably really old. <laughs> Iron on adhesive. So it looks like this. This is a skinnier roll. This, think of this as glue. It's just a little piece here. I'm going to tear a piece off. Tore a piece off. And I'm going to put it right in the hole like that. Put it together. Iron it right there. Just glues together. And then it's done. A lot of people use that on hems and stuff. They're, they're gluing their hems up. <laughs> and then it's done. And then you can wear your mask and fog up your glasses. <laughs> Fogging up my glasses. Put it on your nose, it's supposed to. You can also put a pipe cleaner inside there and then sew it together and then you have it like that. So there is my mask. So make some masks, help save the world, and I'll catch you next time.